Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video looking at all the practicals you need to know for the chemical change topic for the GCSE. The first one we're going to look at is the core practical of preparing copper sulfate from copper oxide and sulfuric acid. Now normally when you get a question on this they will tell you that the copper oxide is insoluble. That's the key word you're looking for. The second you see insoluble, you follow the steps I'm about to go through, which is mainly focusing on filtration. So the first thing you do is you add excess copper oxide into your warm sulfuric acid. We say excess, that means more than needed. And the reason we warm up the sulfuric acid is it speeds up the reaction and it makes sure it's fully reacted. The second step is to neutralize the acid. So keep adding in enough copper oxide until it's fully neutral and then filter the mixture with the apparatus you can see here. What will happen is the copper oxide that is unreacted will stay in the filter paper and your copper sulfate solution will move through into the conical flask below. The third step is crystallization. Now you should remember this from the states of matter topic. That is nice and simply evaporating off the water. So you heat the solution up and it evaporates off the water and that will leave your crystals behind. Now just a few things to note here. How do you know it's neutral? You can either use pH paper or a pH probe. That'll tell you when your solution is neutral. And secondly, when we say heat the solution to evaporate the water, it's usually a good idea to only get rid of about half of it and then leave it on the side to get rid of the rest of the water. If you leave it to cool, the rest of the water will evaporate off and you'll get larger crystals. Practical number two is preparing a salt, so in this case sodium chloride, from sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Now the key here is both sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid are soluble and the step you need to use here is a titration. You can't use filtration because you have no solid to filter. The particles are too small, it'll just go straight through and everything will be collected in the conical flask. The other thing is the pH won't stop at pH 7. You'll take your acid with the pH of 1, you'll add it the alkali in, your sodium hydroxide, and it will get up to pH 7, but then it will keep going. You won't know by looking at it when it is neutral. So if you keep adding it, it will become an alkali, unlike with the core practical I just talked about. So what do we know? What can we do to make sure we know it's neutral? And that is the titration steps. So number one, you take a burette, that's the large thing as you can see on the right hand side, and you fill it up to the zero mil line. Once you've done that, measure out 10 mil of your sodium hydroxide. It doesn't need to be 10 mil, it could be 20, 25, whatever you want to put down in the exam, that's fine. Use a pipette, that's the equipment you need to use. And then add it to a conical flask. Now I've got a beaker down here, a conical flask or beaker, it doesn't matter. Step three, add your indicator. Now try and remember phenolphthalein. This is probably one of the better indicators. It gives you a clear sign of when it's finished reacting, when it's become neutral. Add it in and it will go pink straight away. Once you've done that, turn the tap and start to add in the acid to the alkali nice and slowly. And you're gonna do this until it goes colorless. The second it goes colorless, you turn the tap off. That's how much acid it takes to completely neutralize and make your solution pH seven. Once you've done that, repeat all those steps again. Take an average. Once you have your average, you then need to repeat it without the indicator. Reason for that being, it must be pure. If you have your indicator in there, your sodium chloride crystals will not be pure because you'll have phenolphthalein with them. So you must do it without an indicator. Once you've done that, use your crystallization technique. Place your sodium chloride solution into an evaporating basin, heat it, evaporate off about half the water, leave it to cool, and you'll get your sodium chloride crystals. Practical three, preparing a pure dry precipitate. So this one's asking you to make silver chloride from silver nitrate and sodium chloride. The second you see pure dry precipitate, the method is exactly the same and there are five key steps. The first one is to dissolve your solids. Now, that is only if they're solid. If it tells you they're already solutions, you don't put this first step in. Step two, you've now got your solutions of sodium chloride and silver nitrate. You need to mix them together so they react. So mix them and that's going to make your precipitate. Number three, 
you've got to filter it. So you've now got your precipitate, but you've also got your other solution. So you've got to separate them. So filtration, your precipitate will stay up in the filter paper, which is what we want. And the other thing will go into your conical flask, which we don't need. Number four, it's going to be impure, your precipitate is. It's going to have some of the remaining solution left with it. If you leave it to dry, it will not be a pure dry precipitate. So what you have to do is you have to wash it with distilled water. You give it a rinse, that will remove any impurities. They will go through into the solution below. And then finally, number five, you need to leave it to dry. Nice and simple, five keywords, which might get you five marks out of five in an exam. Dissolve, mix, filter, wash, dry. The final practical is investigating the change in pH when calcium hydroxide or calcium oxide is added to hydrochloric acid. So you need to know the steps, again, of how you can do this investigation. This is the second core practical, so it's highly likely to come up. So, the first thing you want to do is measure out 50 centimeters cubed of your hydrochloric acid. Doesn't have to be 50 centimeters cubed, choose a volume. Add it to a conical flask or a beaker, it doesn't matter what. Step two, use pH paper or a pH probe to measure the pH of the acid. Step three, measure out 0.3 grams of calcium hydroxide or calcium oxide and then add it to the hydrochloric acid. Stir it, make sure it's fully reacted. Once you've done that, re-measure the pH. You're going to do these steps, steps three to six, until you've added around three grams, in other words, until the pH has gone high enough. You'll get some results that look like this and you'll get a graph that looks like this. You can then use that graph to find out the exact mass that it became neutral. So you read across from pH 7, which is on neutral pH, and you go straight down. As you can see here from my graph, 2.1 grams is where it became neutral. The next part of this video is going to have a look at solubility rules. Do you know if something's soluble and can you predict if there is going to be a precipitate? So the first thing you need to be able to do is use this table and then you need to be able to try and learn it because it's not guaranteed they will give you this table in the exam. So the first column here, they are all soluble, which means they will dissolve, they will not form a precipitate. The second column, they are insoluble, which means they will form a precipitate if they appear in your reaction. So if I take a reaction, let's take silver nitrate and sodium chloride. The first thing you'll be asked to do is figure out what the products are and then tell me is there going to be a precipitate or not. So what you do is you have a look and you swap the endings around. So I start off with silver and I take the ending of the other chemical, which is chloride. So my first product is going to be silver chloride. You then do the same with the other one. So take your metal, sodium, take your other ending, nitrate. So my products are silver chloride and sodium nitrate. You now need to figure out if we've got a precipitate or not. So we're going to start off with nitrates. Now, as you can see from the table, all nitrates are soluble. So we know silver nitrate and sodium nitrate are both soluble. So the state symbol we can put in for them to prove that, to show that, is AQ, aqueous. The next thing we want to do is have a look at our chlorides. Now, you can see here most chlorides are soluble, except for silver and lead. So we have a look back over here. I've got silver chloride. That is one of my ones that's insoluble. So that's insoluble. That's going to be my precipitate. So my state symbol will be S because it's a solid. All that's left now is my sodium chloride. Sodium isn't in the insoluble column. It's not silver. It's not lead. It's soluble. Therefore, sodium chloride is soluble and we can put aqueous. So my precipitate in this reaction is silver chloride. And that brings this revision summary video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.